Hello everyone and welcome to EU4 The Rights of Man. Now I have decided to start as Ethiopia in order to check out the new Coptic faith mechanics. And uh, basically the goal of this campaign will be to reclaim all of our holy sites as well as uh, to get the Prester John achievement which is well right here. Basically it requires us to um, take over two of our holy sites Alexandria and Antioch and also take over Constantinople. So basically uh, the Prester John achievement as well as a new achievement called a blessed nation they go hand in hand so it really makes a lot of sense to get them together in one Coptic Ethiopia run um, but yeah uh, without further ado let's actually get into the game now I just want to mention here that since this is a preview build uh, as far as I understand I'm not really allowed to uh, give my thoughts on the uh, I guess on the whole game yet or on the whole DLC just yet but I do want to say that this is one of the most anticipated or one of my most anticipated uh, EU4 DLCs of all times um, but yeah that's uh, as far as I know all I can say for now anyways uh, let's uh, let's go ahead and um, hmm, let's have actually you know what we're gonna first check out one of the new features and that is the leader uh, the leader traits uh, because you know I personally, um, you know, like to like to role play in a lot of my games, and obviously CK2 is very good for that. But uh, in EU4, I like to do that as well. But I've always found it very difficult to, you know, um, to come up with character characteristics for your rulers just by looking at the uh, the stats that they have. So I'm really, um, well, I'm not saying anything, but. Uh, there's a nice addition that you now have leader traits. So um, our current leader, Neguza Nagast, and well, you can read the rest for yourselves. He's a zealot and he's a righteous ruler. So basically what I'm going to do, even though the, uh, I guess, overarching goal of this campaign is to get the Prester John achievement, some of the, I guess, decisions along the way I want to make uh, depending on uh, the traits of our ruler. Um, so since we are a zealot, I think it makes a lot of sense to establish or to send monks, monks to establish monasteries uh, as our first Coptic blessing. So that's going to increase the missionary strength and I feel like this this really fits. This really fits our character and it obviously is very useful as well since uh, if we have a look at here uh, there's a couple of provinces, actually quite a few provinces that need to be converted into uh, or need to be converted to the right religion um, and Sunni is always very difficult to uh, convert, so every every help we can get is appreciated. Uh, but before we actually send a missionary, let's have a quick look at some other stuff. I just closed that for some reason. Um, all right, so uh, we obviously yeah, so we have a very good ruler, a six five five ruler. Uh, he's age 30, 31, so we might we might get lucky here, and he rules for another I don't know thirty years. That'd be great. Um, and his air was not that great. We could use 50 prestige in order to um, disinherit him, but I feel like we're not going to do that just yet. You know what? I might probably just turn this guy into a general and hope that he will die that way. Um, but yeah, let's have a look. Uh, I don't think we're actually able to afford too many rulers or too many advisors here. Uh, Yuli prestige, stability, no, that's not what we're looking for. Diplomatic reputation, trade efficiency. No, I don't think we're going to really be able to afford anything here. Alright, so as our religion, we have a foot defense and tolerance of the true faith. This is just the, the Coptics, uh, or the Copts, and then we also have increased missionary strength. Okay, so uh, the next holy site that we uh, could get is here in Kaza Ibrim, which is currently uh, held by the Sunni Makuria. So I think this is one of the first... Uh, nations that we need to attack but obviously we don't bother them just yet so we cannot do that um, let's actually go ahead and f choose our rivals we are rival to Adal, Ajuran and Kaffa now if I'm not mistaken Kaffa is Coptic but uh, Adal and Ajuran are both Sunni so I feel like we're just gonna rival the nations that rival us um, Adal will be the first one yes um, that's actually also before we do that let's see if there's any um, conquer Ausa relations with Elodia. Elodia is Coptic next to us. Because, uh, you know, if you pick rivals, your missions sometimes change. Elodia, you like us. You know what? I actually could give you... I actually can, could toss you an alliance. We're going to do this. We're going to get extra diplomatic reputation, which is probably not all that useful right at the beginning, but it cannot hurt. So let's go ahead, offer an alliance right there. And also, there is... There are dispute successions in Elodia... 
Okay, but this guy is only 23. Uh, we also have Inkafa, but Kafa has rivaled us, so there's not much we can do here. But in Midi Bari, interestingly enough, they don't really like me that much. But if we could secure a royal marriage here, um, we might be able to take them over. Uh, since we are Catholic, and not Catholic, but Christian, we could have uh, personal unions, and that would actually be quite nice um, to get personal union over this little subject there. But yeah, um, let's uh, continue to add some rivals. Adran will be next, yes, and last but not least, we'll pick Kaffa, and that should seal the deal. There we go. And I think our first war will be against Adal, simply because they're Sunni, and we are obviously a uh, zealot, so that makes a lot of sense, and they're a rival as well, and much weaker too. So all the more reasons to uh, to uh, declare war on them. Okay, code actions, we're going to start a uh, building a spy network. Since we are a righteous man, right, we will only start fair wars or just wars, so we cannot just declare war without any cause. Good. Uh, anything else I need to do? We probably want to start off by starting to convert a couple of provinces here. Maybe the Jews first? No. Ankober would be a good one. So let's go with that. Yes, still 45 months. It's quite a long time. But there's not much I can do. We also need to set up our traders, but I don't think we really have much option here. No. We can only reach the uh, Gulf of Aden as well as Ethiopia. So. Well, we could reach the Great Lakes, but I don't think we're going to do that. So we're going to probably push trade here, transfer trade power. Um, yes. And then we're going to simply collect trade here with you. Awesome. All right. Anything else uh, we need to do? We have a lot of rebel factions about to rise up. but uh, That's too bad. I think for now, since we're not going to declare war immediately, we might want to lower our... Well, our, our maintenance, but also get rid of our forts. Please get rid of that button. Um, and, yeah, lower, lower the funds of our forces. For now, that's totally fine. How many more men can we build? Oh, four more. That's actually quite a bit. All right, let's see if our estates have something to say. Anything in particular. Wow, the burgers. Well, actually, they have a lot of... Lo oh, well, that's, that, that's their loyalty. Okay, so we could ask for a contribution here, but I don't think I will do that. In fact... We could call for a diet. I would like to have the military support. Wow, they have a lot. They have a lot of influence. Control provinces, 40. The clergy, not too much. Make a generous donation. All right, so we're going to take the money from the burghers. Give that to seek support. They gain influence. Um, no, we'll make a generous donation. And we'll demand admin points. Probably. Yes. And then we'll also call a diet and demand some military support. 150. That's really good. Yeah, they lose loyalty, but that's okay. Uh, very nice. Okay, so that's a lot of points. And uh, let's just go forward. We have waited long enough. Let's see what is going on. I would like to get the personal union over Midi, Midi Bari. We have gotten the alliance. Awesome. And the holy heart of Ethiopia. So once Aksum was the heart of the ancient Aksumite Empire, a bastion of Christian power situated at the crossroads of Africa, Arabia, and the Greco-Roman world. Among the obelisk and palace ruins, we have rebuilt the churches of this mighty nation of old. The greatest of them all is the church of Our Lady Maria of Zion. Mary of Zion. Sorry. It is the place where we crown our emperors, the descendants of Menelik I, who was the son of King Solomon and the Queen of Sheba. It is here he brought the Ark of the Covenant. Every year, thousands of pilgrims come from the farthest reaches of our empire and beyond to visit this holy place. Very nice. So once more, Aksum will shine with God's infinite glory. Ten prestige for our glorious nation. And, um, okay, we is now our Itege. I'm not exactly sure what that means. Maybe that means we now have a queen consort. Uh, we do, and she's a 352. That's not too bad. That's not too bad. She'll get a personality trait very soon. We will get one in uh, in 15 years. Okay, I see. That's fine. So now it says, let's see. Do we have a noble from House Solo? This is my house. Will succeed the throne. That's very good. All right, awesome. Now we're going to go ahead and improve some relations with Elodia since that is uh, the goal. Our, this is our mission, and we have 
probably should build a spy network with all of our rivals, at least these two that we border, and you are going to improve relations. Alright, nice. Um, you want to have a royal marriage, I don't think we will accept that, as we have less prestige than we do. Um, on the 12th of December, good. Maybe we even want to go a little bit faster, just so we can get this over with quicker. Uh, maybe even a little bit faster than that. Okay, tw December 12th, there you go, improve relations. Nice. Uh, anything else I have forgotten to do? No. Alright, so we're basically just hoping that this guy dies very soon, that we will then get uh, to claim the throne. That'd be glorious. And Oman has sent an, an insult. Okay, great. I don't really care all that much, I think. Okay, we have two more relations we can get. Unfortunately, we are not a great power. Great power currently are Ming, France, the Ottomans, Timurids, Mamluks, England, as well as Lithuania and Castile. So, early on in his reign, King Zara Yaakov married the daughter of one of the Muslim chiefs of the kingdom. As the young woman converted and set her vows to the Ethiopian emperor, there was no way to know that this would turn out to be one of the most influential persons in Ethiopian politics for years to come. Eleni or Helen would in time serve not only her husband but several successive kings after him as an able advisor and a power behind the throne. So we gain some admin points and we have a new consort, Eleni Hadia, 443. What's our current one? What was our current one? She had 352. Well, so that doesn't really... I guess she's a little bit better, but... Yeah, it doesn't really make change much. A silver tongue. It's actually pretty good. The one we had already was pretty good, but that's okay. Let's see how she turns out. Uh, the House of Hadia. With the union of Zara Yakup and Alani, we have gained not only a spouse, but also a new ally in the realm. The Hadia is an old and influential family, and their seat in Gojam is a jewel of the empire. Of course, friendship has to go both ways, and Alani will be expected to speak for a king, while our Neguza Nagas will be expected to consider such advice to consider such advice very carefully so gojam is the seat of the family of your uh, wife this province will be less likely to revolt but will be granted privileges making it harder to tax or convert gojam now hopefully gojam is not okay gojam's already coptic which is good so that does not really matter that much an everlasting friendship so local unrest goes down but they also get monthly autonomy change that's very unfortunate but that's the way it is. Okay, so let's have a quick look at our new consort. She does not actually have a personality trait just yet. Hopefully it's going to be a good one. I hope it will be a good one. Now, um, if we have a look at our government, I think that should be over here. Uh, we're an empire rank, which is really good. We're a despotic monarchy, but because we're an empire rank, we have monthly autonomy change going down and obviously uh, justified demands and national unrest. Very nice. Okay. So we're not going to have to expect any uprisings from this province. We have coffee here. Very nice. I think what we should do is uh, start and build some more men. Now, one cavalry would be good. I think one cavalry would be good. I'm not sure if we can actually afford that, though. Um, so I think four infantry... Well, four infantry would be fine as well. Two, four. There you go. That's, that's all the money we have. And then we we'll need to get ready to fight these guys. Lovely. Um, right, and I did want to have a look at the great powers. Now, uh, luckily, uh, with the institutions, one of the new features here in the uh, in the Rights of Man DLC, uh, technologies or well, technology groups have been abandoned, and uh, the way technology works um, or the technological penalties work is is much different. And uh, very interesting, I have to say. This is the first time I'm actually going to play around with it. Um, but uh, we'll have a look at this in a second. But obviously, uh, I find it very interesting. I definitely find it very interesting. The good thing is, for the next five years, there's not going to be any penalty. In 1450, that's when the uh, Renaissance will start somewhere in Europe, most likely Italy. And it's going to take a while for them to spread over to Ethiopia. So we, sh we, we should... Um, well... Make haste to reach the coast of uh, the Mediterranean. Otherwise, we're gonna be um, we're gonna suffer a heavy 
attack penalty for the uh, rest of the campaign. But yeah, um, centralization reforms of Zara Jacobs. So under the care of the Solomonic dynasty, Ethiopia has grown from a kingdom into a great empire. However, the, the diverse regions under our rule lack a common language, religion, or administrative system. Zara Jacob, the most able ruler Ethiopia has seen in a long time, has prepared a number of reforms that might go a long way towards creating a more unified state. So until the um, okay, so we're gonna get stability, centralized later, we'll centralize the state right now. So we're gonna get national unrest plus one, um, and monthly autonomy change. I don't really want to suffer the national unrest. If we were to get the stability, a lot of these rebels would stop. Monthly autonomy. Now the thing is, we have autonomy, we have quite a lot of autonomy in, uh, in our country. Let's have a quick look at this. So... Look at this, 25, 9, 25, even 50 down here, that's a lot. Even though there are not ter- I think they're all state cores, not territorial cores. Hmm. Okay, we're all currently losing quite a lot every month. Government forms Ethiopian traditions and peace. Okay, so this is would add another point too. Not really that much. I think I'm going to go with the stability here. Yeah. Uh, but let's have a quick look at uh, the cost of stability at the moment. I think it is probably quite a bit, yeah. Alright, we're gonna go with the stability here, because that will uh, get rid of a lot of these rebel factions. And that's worth quite a bit. That's worth quite a bit. And the only faction uh, that wants to rise up is currently in Ankober, and that is only because we are trying to convert them at the moment. So they will, uh, they will shut up soon enough. Nice. Ooh. Okay, we get a little bit of power rejection from having rivals. We should probably do something with them. We should embargo them or whatever. We'll wait, however, until we have finished our um, our ambition here. Not our ambition. Our mission. That's what it's called. Ambition is CK2. All right. Um, so my plans are, obviously, to take care of or centralize our power here first. Uh, build a nice, strong uh, power base. And then we're going to, obviously take over uh, these smaller nations over here all the way up to Mutapa to get their glorious gold mines uh, which is actually this ivory but there's gold right there uh, that's gonna really help out our economy and in the meantime we obviously need to secure our holy sites in the north and then we'll have to pounce on the Mamluks whenever they're at war with uh, the Ottomans alright so let's go for a new mission conquer achieve religious unity that's gonna take a while conquer Vilatia which is this is over there. Um, sure, manpower recovery speed and yearly prestige. That would actually not be all that bad. Hmm. Well, first off, I want you to come back, as you are not that important. Get access through the sea. Well. Well. No, I think we're going to go and conquer this. Yeah, let's go for that. Yeah. Okay. Uh, because that's a free claim, that's really going to help us out quite a bit. We can then use our other our spy network to get two more claims, that's fine. But we will need to go ahead and uh, do some economic actions here. Issue an embargo as soon as possible, let's obviously go forward, otherwise this doesn't work. There you go, and you will issue an embargo here as well. Uh, Mutapa has sent an insult. I don't even know why this is... I'm being told that they're sending insults. Whatever, that should boost our power position quite a bit, yes. And we'll go up ever so slightly. Nice. Now, um, I don't really mind, well, I don't really think I want to keep this alliance with Elodia for a long time. Uh, you are allied to Arjuran. Ooh. So maybe, maybe Adal is not going to be my first target, as they are rather powerful. Maybe there's someone over here I can... Uh, fight. Maran, you. You probably do not like Ajaran and Adal. So we could probably improve relations with you and get an ally over there. Um, because that's going to be difficult. It's going to be difficult to fight Adal and Ajaran at the same time without any allies. So having Marahan here could be, could be what uh, turns the tide. We obviously have a lot of men, but still. Okay, our manpower, we're almost at the cap, so we definitely need to go to war very soon. I guess we could go slightly over our force limit. Not sure if we're actually able to support that, though. Um, yeah, all kinds of people are fabricating claims. Why are they so fast? Why can I not do that? I cannot fabricate a claim just yet. Hmm. Alright, 
Well, we will be able to do that soon enough. And, uh, glorious. So let's have a quick look at the institutions. So the Timurids have not... Have they embraced? I don't know if they have embraced it yet. No, the Timurids have not actually embraced the uh, feudalism just yet. Neither has Makuria, by the way. But unfortunately, Ardran and Dal have, so they are going to be on par with us. But yeah, uh, let's have a quick look at the... Uh, Great powers. That's something I wanted to do uh, a while ago, but I somehow got distracted. So Ming is number one, France is number two, but there is quite a difference in the de development there. But obviously Ming is going to suffer a heavy tech penalty as the game progresses. Um, France, Poland, obviously Poland's only going to, um, well, continue to grow with the uh, Lithuania as their um, personal union partner. Uh, the Ottomans, Timurids, very strong, but they already suffer a... Uh, penalty here. The Mamluks are also a great power, as well as England and Castile. Good. Um, Gujarat declared a war. Now, interestingly, we can obviously see over into India. Hmm. VJ is, very, is looking very powerful. If they manage to consolidate their power, they might be a nice ally uh, in the future. When in, in, in the East, I should say. Alright, Kaffa, you do not have an ally just yet, but you do have a... Ooh. Look at this. Kaffa actually has... Some shitty provinces, but also a gold province, a gold mine. Hmm. Well, we're gonna go and claim Ilubabor. Yes. Let's do that. And we'll wait for one more claim, and then we will declare the war. I think, even though I said as a zealot we would first go to war with Adal, we might want to change our mind. Or we might want to change our plans here. Alright, dispute succession, Midri Bari, what's gonna happen? No, that's Kaffa. Uh, what's gonna happen with you either? Uh, well, anyway, a, a Kaffa noble. Okay. And, uh, Elodia. You have Elodia Na- Well, we- I guess we could get a raw match with you as well. It wouldn't really hurt, would it? Um, but you are only- The thing is, you're 25. It's very likely that you will get an heir. So, I don't- I don't see what we should. So, this guy is well advised. He is- He will- start one-sided wars. Uh, he prefers to use Konotieri and um, avoid debasing the currency at all costs. He's incorruptible. Send gifts less often. Okay, and my house will take over here once he dies. And he should die. He's 69. And then we can claim that throne, have a personal union buddy, and we can feed them some land. At least that's the plan. Alright, and you? Do you have any particularly interesting province? Mutapa declared one, so Fala. You have a inland center of trade. I think that's what we're gonna go for. Yes. So let's go ahead and claim Harer. Mm, okay, claim Harer, please. And yes, thank you. Hazard declared war nudged. Okay. All things that I don't really care about too much. You, I want as an alliance partner. Not sure how powerful they really are, they don't really have a whole lot of prestige. Neither, yeah, neither one has a lot of prestige here. They would probably join me. You are allied to Mombasa and Warsongali, and you have a vassal. Hmm, they're gonna be very powerful. I think we first need to take over Kaffa before we can really do much here. But they're building troops as well. Let's get our men onto the border here, just so that we can, uh, we can get ready. Uh, maybe... Uh, you know what, actually... Here's what I'm going to do. do. Can we even support this? No, we cannot. We need to split that in half. Get some troops over here. And... You are the ones that need an extra cavalry. Alright. You will get it. You will get it. Oh, we've already lost some men here. That was, that was not smart. That was not smart at all. Okay, so you have 5 and 2. 7 and 1. Let me give you one cavalry and send one infantry over there. That should be much better. Six. A six, two, six, two. Our Iteji of the people. Uh, it has become clear to us that Iteji Elini is a woman with a heart of gold. She always does her best to please her husband, 
and treats her friends with unparalleled kindness. During a recent trip to the RC province, Eleni saw the suffering of its poorest peasant with her own eyes. Ever since, she has been drafting a plan to help her most destitute subjects. In order to make these ideas into reality, however, Eleni needs some funds from the nation's treasury, so you can lose a little bit of coin and admin power, but reduce the national unrest. Hmm... Probably should have gone with decentralization then. Yeah, I probably should have gone with that. With more important matters. Alright, well, have her consort the people, that's fine. National unrest going down is always nice. Now, obviously, it would have been good uh, to have the uh, autonomy reduction. And we've taken a loan. Oh, I did not even know that we just took a loan. Well, that was stupid. Um, okay, well, there we go. We now have a loan and we have some interest, but that's not going to be uh, too uh, annoying, I, I think. We're going to be able to get the money back once we've taken over Kaffa, but that will be in the next episode. Thank you so much for watching so far, guys. I hope you have enjoyed, and I'll see you guys next time.